Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your resentful gnome host, Daniel Green, and today we have just so much fantasy news. It's been like a full week since I put out the last one, so we just need to get trucking on through it. Don't worry, I ate my Wheaties. I'm gonna take my time and do my job well. Starting off with the insane start to Brandon Sanderson's recent Way of Kings Kickstarter. I am floored by what I am seeing here. You think I'm exaggerating? Look at this ticker. This is how much money Brandon Sanderson is getting on this Kickstarter happening in real time. It's so fast. This is the fastest Kickstarter I have seen in my life. He's already, as I'm watching it right now, oh, he's hitting $2 million. When I set up the camera, it was at 1.6 million. It's at 1.97778. Oh my Lord. Yes, with the initial goal of 250,000, which just seems cute now, just, just cute. Brandon Sanderson seems to be smashing records for an author jumping onto Kickstarter right now. I, good job, well earned. Holy smokes, Brandon Sanderson's popularity continues to amaze me. For full reference, Brandon Sanderson hit $2 million on Kickstarter in 37 minutes. Thank you also in the Discord server for giving me that news and oh my God. I would not be surprised to see almost everything you could possibly get in this Kickstarter to be sold out by the time this fantasy news is released. Literally, if I had it up within an hour of this being put out, I wouldn't be surprised to see it all be sold out. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, if you're a little too late to get a possible uh, copy of uh, the Brandon Sanderson signed leather bounds, I think you can still get the unsigned ones or things like that, go ahead and check it out, of course, in the links down below. But just congratulations. I have no idea what else to say besides good job. There was also just a really cool trailer for this drop with Michael Kramer narrating, and I'll have that link down there because it sounds so good. Michael Kramer, your voice. It's like chocolate in the ears. I love it. It's so outstanding. Final update before I'm actually uploading this video. It looks like Brandon Sanderson is on track if he even keeps a fraction of the momentum he's on with this Way of Kings Kickstarter to be in the top 10 funded Kickstarters of all time. He already got halfway there within an hour. And if he even keeps a little bit of that momentum, he could blow into the top 10 spots pretty easily. So I'll be keeping my eyes on that. Follow me on Twitter if you'd like any updates because I'll let you know when it happens. But with two more quick pieces of Brandon Sanderson news, we also had him talking about his latest draft of the upcoming Stormlight Archive fourth entry, saying that he has 500 pages, about 100,000 words left to do in the final draft. So it looks like good progress for the next Stormlight Archive book. And then in what is without question, the weirdest Brandon Sanderson story we've ever covered here on Fantasy News. He also hopped into an r slash relationships thread where someone was talking about how their boyfriend was trying to make them read one of his massive books. And Brandon Sanderson came in and was like, yeah, you don't have to read it if you don't want to. And that that's weird, but it was cool. Also well handled by Brandon. Well done. Yeah, this, he's right. And also don't force people to read books they don't want to. I mean, if, you, if you're not interested, you're not interested. That's the end of the conversation. Also, I'm very shocked to hear Brandon's own brother hasn't read this 1200 page masterpiece, but yes, Brandon, you can still love him as well. As I said in yesterday's review, I have friends that hate books I love and love books I hate, and we're still friends because it's just a book. But before we get into any more news here today, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it over to Green Daniel to discuss today's sponsor. In a world that you're trying to write using nothing but standard Word documents, you get buried with so many documents. Where was that one chapter you wrote? Oh, turns out you didn't write it down in the title. Now it's gone. Boop, you're never gonna find it again. Never to complete your story. You're gonna die. That was too much. I know what you're thinking, Daniel. Why are you holding the mic so close to your face? Because it sounds like this if it gets far away at all. And also you're probably thinking, what could you possibly be promoting? Campfire! Campfire is the amazing one-time payment, not a subscription plan. It's not gonna drain your wallet month after month. Writing software tool to help you get through what you gotta get to get your story done. You can use this to go ahead and build a fantasy world, just as I did with my audience on Twitch. We made an animal-based vampire hunting badass world, and we were able to do it because this tool 
brings the whole box along. Did that metaphor work? You could have maps, magic systems, handle languages, and something I just figured out, didn't even tell me to say this in the promo, they got their own Discord server to go ahead and get some writing advice from other people who are also using Campfire. You can get Campfire Pro for a one-time payment of $49.99, or you can get Pro and the expansion pack for a one-time payment of $75. Just one-time thing. You're paying hundreds for Netflix every year, thousands if it's HBO too, I don't know. Know the actual price of HBO, I'm sorry. But yes, go ahead and download Campfire here and get your world building on today. Back to the video. That was that was aggressive, Green Daniel. We also had another Kickstarter launch for a graphic novel from Saladin Ahmed called Dragon. Apparently it involves a Muslim knight and a Christian nun teaming up to take down Dracula. That is awesome. I really like the way it looks on the Kickstarter, and I'll be checking this one out for sure. Congratulations, and wow, I hope your Kickstarter is a success. Of course, we also had two additional castings from the Wheel of Time drop as well. This is Abdul Selis as Eamon and Stuart Graham as Jeffram. So we're getting more of these characters scribbled on in throughout. I'll have some of the things they're known for up on the screen now. Yes, other Wheel of Time casting, how do you feel about it? I think this looks good. I don't understand the people who like hate casting before they see anything about the portrayal because I've seen actors who have done like nothing I've liked in their career turn around and give like a performance that totally and utterly changes how I view them as an actor. So I always just wait to see what they're gonna bring to this performance unless it's like just unexcusably bad casting. That's rare. Usually Hollywood's at least in the ballpark. And in a fun bit of Wheel of Time news, we also had that interview with Jennifer Garcia uh, be covered on winterscoming.net and a nice little here are the big takeaways from it. So if you'd like to see that, of course, link down down there, just as everything is today that I have talked about. We also had another novel announced from Tor from author Timson Muir, I hope I'm saying that right, titled Princess Forlinda and the Forty Flight Tower. I haven't actually gotten into Gideon the Ninth yet, it's been high on my TBR for a while, I'm excited to check that one out, and for the fans of that, it's always good to see more from an author you like, so go ahead and, you know, pre-order or whatever's available for this one right now. Probably not much, it just got announced, probably no pre-order yet. In amazing Lord of the Rings news, it has been announced that Andy Serkis himself will be coming on out to record a new edition of an audiobook for The Hobbit. That's right, the voice behind Gollum and such an iconic actor, character worker, and motion capture legend Andy Serkis will be recording a new audiobook edition of The Hobbit. Oh, I'm sorry, I actually misread this headline. After looking over my notes again, it's actually already recorded and will be released September 3rd. So you can go ahead and check it on out and give it a pre-order if you're interested in listening to the timeless classic The Hobbit once again, read to you in the sultry tones of Andy Serkis. Now this is actually a one-two day for Lord of the Rings news because it's also being reported that the show is one, resuming filming in New Zealand, which I've seen confirmed all over the place, but then I'm seeing some unconfirmed reports, but from sources I generally trust that the show's budget has been upped to almost nearly twice what it was. Now, that probably sounds phenomenal to a lot of Lord of the Rings fans who are going, yay, oh my gosh, a Lord of the Rings show with a budget of nearly 200 million? I'm not saying that they're not increasing the budget overall to make the show look and feel better, but this also might be a reaction to probably how much it costs to shut down production for so long and now start it back up. So both of those probably play a factor. I'm not saying don't be excited to see a larger budget for this show, but this is also probably somewhat the cost of shutting down and starting back up production on such a tremendous project. But to my New Zealanders out there, can you like take some photos of them working on it and send it to me? That'd be really cool, thank you, bye. Are you a Sandman fan by chance? I am, I'm working on the second one right now. I'm also really excited to say that the full cast production of the audiobook starring the likes of James McAvoy and several other huge names just had a trailer drop to get people all the more hyped. Definitely check this out, James McAvoy, just hearing him Read Sandman. Yes, I generally don't like full cast production audiobooks though, so I'll be challenging myself to try to get in this. I just usually prefer one artist kind of trying to capture the whole world rather than like throwing it back and forth between several different actors going back and forth. It just tends to pull me out a bit. I'll give it a go and we'll see with these 
amazingly talented individuals behind it, I can invest once again and enjoy the Sandman story being presented in this medium. Tor.com also released my favorite monthly drop for them with their upcoming fantasy books to check out in July of this year. I usually pick out one to say I'm most excited for, and I'd be lying if I picked out anything on this list that's not just Peace Talks, the next Dresden Files book. Of course it's Peace Talks. I can't even lie to you. It's it's Peace Talks. Subscribe to see a review of the Dresden Files side stories coming down, coming down here pretty quick. See, I didn't say coming down the road because you guys say I say coming down the road too much. That's my bad. I do say it a lot. I'll try and change it up. Maybe not. I like saying it. Now, Willow 2. Willow 22222. Ron Howard has given some pretty vague general statements about how he's happy with it. Apparently Warwick Davis is also happy. It's coming and production is well on its way. Location scouting is occurring. I'm curious what people feel about this because I recently put up on Twitter uh, what should and shouldn't be remade. And one of the things that was mentioned in shouldn't was Willow. So are people excited to see not a remake, which is something I was saying on Twitter, but a sequel. This is Willow 2. Do you want to see that? Are you excited or no? Willow is just a little nice thing that happened and let's leave it there. I want to know, let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for a Willow 2 with Ron Howard involved. While we're getting these updates out of the way, we also had one from Rick Royden who discussed his working with Disney in the Percy Jackson show that is being developed right now. He refers to the script being in a state where it's like an outline, but much more thorough than you'd think. Essentially, it's the story, but without the dialogue, according to Rick Royden. But he also promises more soon. In maybe the most controversial opinion I'm gonna have here today, uh, piece of news. We also had it announced to us that the creators behind Westworld are now developing a live action Fallout show for Amazon. Cause you know, Amazon's the one buying up all the big IPs and turning them into high budget shows right now. I don't know what you do with this. I've played the Fallout games and don't get me wrong. I like a few of them quite a bit, but I don't find them to be the most narratively interesting games. I play them because they're fun to get in this world and the gameplay is interesting and things along those lines. I never was 100% there for the storyline and I don't think many people were. Am I wrong? Let me know. If you're all about Fallout for that story, that's cool. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying my impression of the series so far. So I'm just really confused on where they would take it. I hope they would develop their own independent story of what's been done with Fallout before with some very talented writers who would maybe make it loosely connected to what we know for established Fallout lore. I This might just be one of those situations where they buy the well-known IP to grab an audience along with it and then tell a story that's quite different. It's just in the same setting that the games have built up. I'd be okay with that because the setting for Fallout is pretty outstanding. Again, of course, if you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments. And I'm sure I've just made some fans angry who love the Fallout story and think it's just the best game story ever. And hey, I am happy you're able to enjoy the games in that way. It just wasn't how I enjoyed them. I think in my ideal scenario, they would take the setting of Fallout with the vaults and all that, and then just develop something different taking place with those similar elements at play. I think that would be really interesting and probably what I would put my money on they're going for here. I also, of course, need to devote some time within fantasy news here to just dismissing the rumor wheel that's always spinning and turning out there. And we saw quite a few headlines popping up over the last week of like, oh, Disney thinking about dismissing the Star Wars sequels as canons. They're gonna get rid of them. They're no longer gonna be a thing. There is nothing credible I have seen behind any of these. It's just vague rumors coming out of nowhere to get clicks. Now I'm seeing many articles come out now that those have been floating around saying, N no, n no, this isn't a thing. Stop saying it's a thing. Additional digging has been done, and it seems like almost all of this is originating from one YouTuber who claimed to have an inside source where they told him that there's some kind of civil war going on over at Lucasfilms. It is notable that this YouTuber has had leaks before that have turned out to be true. So I'm not saying entirely this person is 100% wrong, but from my perspective, this seems extraordinarily unlikely, and this YouTuber hasn't been right 100% of the time, but I would be flabbergasted if it turned out they retconned their entire new trilogy. My big suspicion is as Disney progresses with Star Wars, we're gonna see them actually go back. I would think we're gonna actually go back to the Old Republic. That would be a smooth way to pull the focus from the sequels and allow Disney the freedom of essentially a restart where they could do whatever they wanted and try to build up credibility again. I find it doubtful they're going to go forward from the sequels from here because of how 
limited it is what you could do with Star Wars after the rise of Skywalker, and they'd have a lot more freedom if they jump back to the Old Republic or just did something entirely new. If the morning of me dropping this fantasy news, suddenly Disney comes out and it's like, we're decanonizing the sequels, I, I give everyone the right to just Give me infinite crap about that because I would have well earned it. <laughs> a pretty solid rumor has emerged and I've looked into this. There's some credible people saying, yes, this is happening of another live action Constantine movie in development for DC. Now the rumor that's been layered on top of this rumor because that's the day and age of media we live in is that Keanu Reeves is confirmed returning. I haven't seen anything that actually says, yes, this is for sure a thing. I've just seen people speculating and then other articles going off that speculation to say like, it's happening for sure, because that's again, the day and age of media we live in. But I'm not saying he's not returning. I think I've actually heard Keanu Reeves express interest in attempting this role once again. So it's not outside the realm of possibility. And it's where a lot of those speculation articles are pulling from. They're saying, oh, they're doing another one. Keanu said he'd love to do it again. So they're just making the assumption that it's confirmed. All I'm saying is those articles are going too far. Oh, and the reported Zatanna movie has actually begun development. We covered a while ago how that was uh, apparently in the works over at DC. Now it is happening. Zatanna movie is in development. In just one piece of trailer news, I want to knock on out of the park here. We had a trailer drop for Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning for the PlayStation 4. Looks pretty interesting. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, really all about these cinematic game uh, trailers. They don't actually tell you much about the game itself because it's not real gameplay, but it, it sure was fun to watch, so cool. And in the last piece of fantasy news we're gonna cover here today, we had a long post from Steven Erickson himself that it would take me a long time to get through and get into. Uh, the biggest takeaways here is he was talking about what he's working on right now, which is pretty interesting. And unfortunately that he lost a loved one due to the virus. So my condolences to Steven Erickson. That's awful. Uh, but I do recommend any Erickson fans check this out and read it in full. I don't want to just summarize and condense because this kind of seemed like a personal post for him. So for all Malazan fans, all Erickson fans, go in the description and just go ahead and check that one out. It's on his Facebook. I just think if you're going to check this out, do it in full more than I could do in the news aggregate format I have here on this channel. But this this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Let me know what your favorite story of the day was in the comments down below. That way I know what to focus on more in the future. If you'd like to contribute fantasy articles for me to cover in the next episode, go ahead and join that Discord server and post them in the Fantasy News channel. Like and subscribe if you have not already. And hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!